everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Everyday Whiskey. I'm Dan. And I'm Mike. And this week we are doing another week of randomness. So basically the, the theme here is is essentially single malt, mm-hmm. except there are three, three out of the five are single malts. Yeah. So the 2XO and the Chattanooga are, this is a high malt, it's not a single malt. Mm-hmm. It's just a high malted bourbon. Uh, this is a straight up Kentucky bourbon. And then you have a Scottish single, 13 year single barrel. You single have malt. Single, single malt. <laughs> you have Old Pepper single malt. And you've got Yellowstone's brand new 108 proof single malt. So that's going to be an exciting one for us to drink. Uh, or drink and try. So uh, let's get right into it. We're going to start off with the Gordon and McPhail uh, Cow Isla 13 year. Yes. Correct? All right. So for those of you who are very into scotches or whiskey in Ooh. general, you may know who Gordon and McPhail are. Um, I don't actually, so I'm going to give you basically what Gordon and McPhail do in, in brief is they buy a ton of new makes from a lot of major, uh, Scotch distilleries, McAllen, Cal Isla, uh, Glenlivet, Glenroth, Glendronic. They also own their own distillery, which they bought in 93 called Benromac. Um, however, what they do is they kind of buy these exclusive new makes. Sometimes some of them, they could get as much as just one bottle. And they kind of further age them, put them on wood. And you could basically find their products anywhere from like 90 to 200 all the way up to like, we're talking like car loans, like 40, 50, 60 grand. So like, ultra, like ultra rare, yes. like one off. Very edition. rare stuff. Okay. I will put a link in the description to the website so you can read more about them because I could take up 45 minutes just telling you about them. Uh, really cool stuff that they do. Um, but... In summation, we'll stick to just the Cal Isla, Coal Isla. I, I can never pronounce this distillery. I'm sorry if I'm Cal butchering Isla. it. Cal um, Isla. The 13 year. So basically, it's in a 13 year old expression distilled by Coal Isla Distillery. It's aged and bottled by Gordon and McPhail for its discovery range. Sweet, fruity, light smoked with a long, sweet finish. So that's basically what they do is they take the new makes, Gordon and McPhail, from these distilleries and they handle the aging and maturing okay. kind of like how some people are just master it's blenders. Sa- it's the same idea as sourcing that's what they're doing yeah they're, they're, essentially they're, they're blending sourcing. and barreling and that's that's where the artistry... well they're not no they're they're only aging they're not so, blending so okay so basically yeah. they're a barreling house at yep. that point for, for new, the most for new part. Makes. okay yeah it's really cool all right this is super interesting and like i said i'm actually not familiar with gordon mcphail I, i'm familiar with ben romack and mm-hmm. glendronic and cow and you know so you're you're exactly you're you more know. familiar with the distilleries they source from yeah. uh but like i said i'll link gordon mcphail to do your reading it's really yeah. cool what they How do about it? i just i read it before we started it's actually really fascinating and it's like it's kind of cool yeah it, uh the, there's another distillery that does something similar to them called the lost distillery yes uh but that's they actually find like basically barrels in the back of warehouses people didn't know they had mm-hmm. and then they re basically and they like, go for it and they reintroduce them to the world but all right let's get into it cheers cheers there's a lot of there's supposed to be a lot of fruit banana honey like honey, i get banana like I, yeah Ooh. that is a nice Ooh. it's got a little grittiness to it a That's little a smoke and then like i get like very ripe like orchard fruit Kind yeah. of like like apples, yeah. apricots. Um, wow, it's that's very good. it's very light and very playful though. Uh, I do like that a lot. It's not the best scotch I've ever had in my life. No. Oh, just for anybody who's wondering, my voice is <laughs> fucked. Uh, yeah. I got married two weeks, almost two weeks ago, and proceeded to get very violently ill after that. So <laughs> not during the wedding, thankfully, but violently yeah. after that, and I lost my voice. So I'm still recovering right now, but I can taste whiskey just fine. Um, it's, I like it. Smoky, I like it. fruity, peaty. For as peaty as the nose is and, the, and as peaty as the front palate is, it's just as fruity in the back palate yeah. and at the back end of the nose. So it's a lot going on. This is a very symmetrical whiskey. Yeah. As far as like the nose and the palate goes. I'll go first. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm very, very comfortable at a 7.6. That's close. I was gonna say seven five. Yeah, so we'll go seven five. I'm good yeah, with that. I like let's do seven five. All right, and just yeah, I'm putting in the ratings on my phone as I've been doing every video this year. Yep. All right. So next, uh, Mike, explain to us what we got here because you brought All right. this. Yep. This, so these are the two I brought. Two um, XO. This is a really interesting brand. So I will be full disclosure. 
The company I work for, we will, we are, these the are brand three. new to us. The first three. Oh yeah, the first three yeah. actually. Um, these are brand new to us. We just started distributing them. Um, this is pretty interesting. I found, I never knew about 2XO until last week. Like I said, you'll, Mike's about to explain it. Yeah. I, I had seen it in some posts uh, and was curious about it, but to be honest to me, like I saw the packaging and I didn't know if it was like a gimmicky thing or like the packaging was a little off to me, but I now hearing the backstory, the it's cool. It's very cool. So, so just go into it. So the name 2XO, basically what that stands for is two times oaked. And it, this company was created by Dixon Deadman. Um, some of you might be familiar with this guy's name. He is pretty much the, act, not pretty much, he is the founder of Kentucky Owl Bourbon. Uh, Dixon Deadman, he's probably 40, heard of Kentucky Owl. Yep. Okay. Dixon Deadman is a 40, 40 year old blender and he's established himself as one of the most prolific American whiskey blenders in the industry, known for his high proof, robust Kentucky Owl Bourbon and Rye blends. I have the whole slide deck on this stuff. Um, yeah. We're going to skip a couple things. Let's go down. Two times oak is a blending process where Dixon rebarrels his hand selected aged whiskeys into new charred oak barrels for intense wood notes and extraordinarily rich complex flavors. Uh, each blend is basically inspired by his design, his drive to innovate, collaborate, and create high quality liquids. Yeah. So let me give you one more brief thing. So the Icon series, which is this guy, are one-off small batch releases. Each blend is always different and it bears its own name and inspired by the story <coughs> behind it. I got you. Um, basically what he does, he takes one low rye mash bill from them and then blends it with one high rye mash, mash bill, and okay. then you get the resulting product. All right, so he's trying to create balance, essentially, within the two barrels, so that he doesn't yep. need one to, when Basically, he doesn't want to wind up on one side of the spectrum or the other, and that's the hardest part about blending, essentially, is creating yes. balance, because you are conjoining two bourbons that may not work together. No. So then, once he has his two mash bills, Dixie, he double barrels them. They're usually six-plus year old of the high rye bourbon mash bill. And then he puts the, he puts them into the one barrel. And then after that, he basically takes them from one barrel, puts them into a new charred oak barrel, which usually uses either number three or number four Argyle char. Which is what wild turkey. Or, uh, number three, number four char levels. I don't know the, okay. if it's Argyle. Just for reference, wild, your wild turkey that everybody enjoys, they use the number three Argyle char on the yep. barrels. Um, basically what all this does is you got the two mash bills, the two barrels. This gives him four components on which he can blend by. Low rye bourbon, high rye bourbon, double barrel aged high rye, number three char, and number four char. He can use that those four yeah. things Penelope, to make different different renditions. And another, like, if you want a comparison for a brand, Penelope does the same exact thing that he's doing mm -hmm. as far as, like, choosing different char levels in the barrels to create different textures and different flavors because that's where you do get a lot of flavor in yeah. whiskey is through your char levels and the type of barrel that you use, basing basing that all off of wood contact. Yep. Because obviously the more you char something, the more the pores are going to open, the more wood contact you get, the more flavor you get hypothetically. Mm -hmm. So with all that being said, let's drink this motherfucker. Let's go. All right. So that was... Yeah, a lot of people don't understand. Like blending is just as much an art as distilling is in general. Nose is very light. I'm it's not, a very light. I'm actually nose. not getting anything. Like, not that I'm not getting anything. I get actually just ethanol. I get yeah, a little bit a little of like ethanol -y hay. Light hay. Light oak. Maybe a little bit. I don't get any oak on the nose for me. Ooh. Ooh. That's interesting. That comes through very it's kind of creamy. Toasted. I think it's a double it's definitely the double the, like the it two is it's the a, double, oak. double oak. It it creates this creamy texture. Which it's is like, very fun. I've said this about in other whiskeys. It's kind of like licking the inside of the barrel. I like so I'm a big fan of these double oak renditions because I love those big, bold, smoky, and oaky flavors in bourbons. So this is something I'd, and I'd like. And you do get that hay note in the palate as well. It's this creaminess, tech, creamy texture to it. This kind of like hay funk on the palate. It's very nice. Um, it's funny because this isn't advertised as a toasted barrel, but yeah. I would put this next to oh, it's a little, Penelope's <laughs> toasted. It's a little toasty. Yeah. Um, all right, you go with your rating first. I think I'm knowing, and like I said, this is about $100 a bottle, mm -hmm. somewhere, somewhere in that area. So you go first. Let's see what you think. I'm going in with an eight on this one. Mm -hmm. I really like it. Yeah, I, I'm definitely like not quite there on it. I... Uh, <sighs> I didn't expect you to be. I don't so wanna, no pressure. I, I, don't, I did not I don't want to be too hard on this one either, but I was I was legitimately at like a 6.8. Yeah. 
Okay, I really uh, I like I, I like it, but it what it's not my favorite. It, no, that's fine because I know it's not your pro your, so your palate. I like. Do you want to meet me in the middle at like a seven point four? I can do seven four. All right, so seven point four out of ten on the two XO. Yep. Uh, the innkeepers blend. Yes. But all right, next one. Let's get into this. I have wanted to have a bottle of this forever. So this is the Old Pepper Single Malt. Yes. Uh, if you guys don't know what Old Pepper is, essentially it is the high-end extension of 1776. Yep, James E. Pepper. So James E. Pepper. It's a high-end extension of that. Uh, so they are made out of the Owensboro Distillery, which is basically they make Wheel Horse, James E. Pepper products, the Old Pepper products, and a few others. I'm not going to go off and list everything right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if I've said anything on camera, I like weird whiskey. I like oddball stuff, and so does Mike. I do too. So American single malts, I, um, sometimes are my favorite whiskey. I'm right there with you. I really, I cannot pass up an American single yeah. malt, and I think that's just because I think that's the Scotch in me that comes. It, yep. It's like the merging of two worlds, like Scotch meets. American bourbon or whiskey, and you usually get a. I, I don't think I've had an American single malt I don't like. Yeah, they, <laughs> like with American single malts, they tend to bring like this funky fruitiness with a nice barrel tone, and it's yeah. kind of the best of both worlds. And and again, I love balance in my whiskeys. Yes. And with an American single malt, you have to have balance, or else you have nothing. Yep. So let's get into it. The Cheers. old pepper. We have had this, but we have not rated it. So, right off the bat. Oh, I drank it without thinking. I know, I, I almost did, and I saw myself. The nose I'm getting, like, mesquite, kind of. Yeah, the, the, it's a spicy wood. It's a, yeah. It's spicy. But you get that fruit funk, too. Mm -hmm. So you get kind of that fig note. It's like it's like fresh figs you yeah. pick off a tree. Oh, my God. I love this bottle. I kind of get, remember when we had the... a lot hot, going on here, man. Remember when we had, the, like, the Hadazaki, and I got that, like, light like a, seaweed nori It's note? like that Ameshu, the Ameshu... It's the Ameshu cast. The, uh, so the, it, yeah, you get the... Um, that umami flavor. Like, little, I get a little, little bit, bit of that on there. Like I said, to me, like, I get, like, um, musty chocolate notes, and I get this 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 bright green flavor, like green bell peppers. Green tea, green pepper. Yeah. Um, it's really nice. I am a huge proponent of this bottle. Um, do you want to go first, or do you want me to go first? No, I'll go first. Okay. All right, so... Uh, by no means do I think this is over a nine. This is not over a nine. All right, we're already different then. Okay, so, <laughs> uh, no, to me, this is a solid 8.4. All right, I was going to go solid nine on this bad boy. I'll go 8.7. 8.7? 8.7 it is. 8.7 out of 10 on the Old Pepper Single Malt. I really like this Nice bottle. showing. This is really good. All right, the next one. Single malt. American Single Malts are just... I really don't think there's been an American single malt I haven't enjoyed. The next one, I'm going to say one thing before we start. It has nothing to do with fucking Yellowstone. Yes, this has nothing to do with the TV show or HBO. Okay, or, so or now that we've admitted that. This has been around long before the show has been 30 around. 30 years beforehand. It's made by Limestone Branch Distillery. Yeah. So, it is the brand new released Yellowstone single malt. I had to have it. And it's not crazy expensive. So, uh, do you know what the pricing on this is off the top of your head? Not off the top of my head. I think it's like eighty five. Yeah, it's not crazy expensive. I believe it's like up by eighty five. I could be wrong. If someone knows, please comment it. Google. This was fifty dollars. Yellowstone single malt is fifty dollars. Let's see. And it's a fresh crack. Old pepper single Boop. malt. Merchandising pour. Oh, all right. We're looking online. We're looking at like 59, 54. All right, sub 60. So all that's right, good. Sub good. All right, so we'll say 60. So it's kind of right in line. We'll say 60 to 65. Yeah, I'm looking at anything from like 50 to 60. Because right. in New Jersey, you got to add like 10%. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's get into this. It's a fresh crack, so we got to cheers. Yellowstone single malt. Ooh. 108 proof, so eight points higher in proof from the old pepper. It smells weird. I like this nose better than this, though. I think it's got more going on. You actually do smell corn in this nose for a single yes. malt. It, it's, it, you for, do. This is 100% malted barley. This bag. smells like a bale of hay, dude. Like, if you go into, like, a barn, this smells like a bale of hay. It smells very rustic. Yeah. I, yeah. So, uh, every hipster's apartment in Fishtown, Philadelphia, oh. 
Wow. There you oh, go. that was too big of a whip. Rustic. Woo! That, uh... And I, I'm saying this because I have barn doors in my house. I guarantee you there's barn doors yeah. in that apartment. It's got this an interesting is, nose. It's an interesting nose. I really like the nose. It's clean. It's light. It's not it overbearing. So let's get into it. That's kind of cool. It's corn, dude. It's straight up... It's it's a single malt that tastes like corn whiskey. The di like good. the juxtapo of flavors that's happening right now makes no sense. I can't pinpoint this at all. It's it's so light though. There's the, it, yeah. like this is very heavy and dense. Where and this is like fluffy like and light. It's lot. airy. I like this a lot. Mm, butterscotch. A little bit, of, little butterscotch, bit of butterscotch, but it's light. It doesn't corn. like it's not overbearing, and it doesn't. You're not chewing on it either, which yeah. is nice. But yeah. Again, I'm getting that weird nori seaweedy. Yeah, the the umami, the, the umami, umami is definitely yeah. there, like gar garlicky umami. Somehow. I'm getting that again on this too, just like that. Yeah, one. I really, I actually, I might prefer this from the old pepper just because it's so light. See, I think I'm. This is a really thin cork. I'm sorry, my ADHD just kicked in. Like, no, the cork that is a tiny friggin' cork. Well, it's not point two point five like, or point two five points from. Um, uh, I'm not that yeah. far off from the pepper on this. All right, one. you go first. I'll go second because I'm actually not far off the pepper either. But... I'm going with a solid eight eight. Yeah, I'm good with that. I, I think <laughs> I, dude, I literally think it's point one better than the old pepper yeah. to me, just because it's a little bit lighter, and I think the flavors. Way more than like, and it's, to me, uh, I find it a little bit less than the. So that's a yeah. perfect eight 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 point eight out of ten on the. Uh, I knew we had to agree on one of these eventually. The Yellowstone single malt. That's a, that's I'm awesome. Gonna, I think I'm gonna pick one of these up. This is good. All right, the last one. Unfortunately, we're gonna tease the shit out of you on this one. You can't get this in New Jersey. No. You can only get this basically in the South. You can get it in yeah. Illinois as well. Illinois and Indiana. Uh, it's everywhere but, but Jersey. But you, they do not go north of South Carolina. So my buddy Tim, his friend was doing a tour of Southern America <clears throat> for work or whatever. I don't fucking know. You know prostitutes. <laughs> uh, and uh, he sent Tim a bunch of pictures and he texted me and he's like, what do you want to get? And I I wanted the 111 bourbon. I just wanted to try the <coughs> cast strength bourbon. I didn't want any cast finished anything. I wanted to try... Chattanooga Whiskey's 111, just so you know. I actually, I love this cork. So, Dude, it's such a cool cork, right? It's this, a, it's, a, it's it's the perfect cork. It's just a one one piece cork. It's a perfect cork. It's a pro, it's a dude, it's yeah. like a prohibition style cork. The top is cork, the bottom is, like, it's just cork. You didn't say anything about the nose, you get right into it. What the fuck are you doing? Mm -hmm. I think you're spitting back in the glass. Mm -mm. <laughs> no. So the nose is classic bourbon. I don't get much of a nose. The nose is classic bourbon. Light char, little oak. Wait, no, I'm serious. I'm not smelling anything. COVID. Oh! Don't do that. I You're just snorting Ooh. it. I. You're right. Classic bourbon. Yeah, light char, it's little hay, like... little oak. It, it's it's got that tin. Yeah. It's got that tinge of burnt cola. Yeah, a little bit. Like, there's nothing that. Pops out. Yeah, not an overly impressive nose, but still solid. So let's get into this. I like thing. it though. Hmm. Burnt cola. Yeah, just burnt cola. Hey, hey, hey. Black licorice. A little cola. I gotta get it back into that for a licorice. little bit of oak. Not a lot of oak, but a but little it's, subtle. This oak. is very clean. It's very clean. It's very easy drinking. If you want a bourbon, like if you're looking for a bourbon that has like this pop of flavor, this doesn't have that. No. Not, there's not an explosion of flavor, but it's very simple it's and it's classic, very well done. Yeah, it, I mean, it's a classic bourbon. It's just very straightforward bourbon flavors. Yeah. This is a great little bit of vanilla, a little bit of oak, a little bit of cola, a little bit of like. I get vanilla like, and I get that kind of burnt, burnt cola yeah. note. Uh, I don't get the black licorice, but I kind of see where you're going with that. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say it's real prominent. Like, black yeah. rick licorice, like, punches yeah. you in the face. Like, yeah. It's not super prominent, but I get little hints, I gotcha. hints of it. So, however, Very though, I, like I said, I think this is your perfect fire pit bourbon. Like, if you're yes. going to have a bourbon you want to pass around with your buddies, 
even people who don't like bourbon, this is so for 111 proof and being cash. Yeah, it's smooth. There is legitimately no kick. No, zero kick. As much as I hate the word, it's smooth. So, and I guarantee you're going to agree with me on this rating. I can. I, I I would not bet my life on it, but I, if I know you, you will. You'll probably be thinking something within three points of this. I think it's an wait eight. within three points or within point three points. Like point three points. Okay, I was yeah, gonna point say three points. that's a pretty wide margin. Point three yeah, points. I'm gonna bet my life on it. I'm gonna make sure it's right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm going to bet my life on it. I'm going to make sure like it's within the fucking parameters. Uh, no, I, I think it's an eight flat. I can meet you there. Yeah. I, I, what I were you thinking? Eight. I actually was going to say an eight. Eight so, one? No, eight. eight, eight. eight. Yeah, so. I was, do- I was like to- tossing between like an eight or like a <laughs> seven, eight, but like I settled on eight kind of in my head before you, you did. Like it, it's good. It's just, it just, it's solid for sure. It ticks all the boxes. Like, so. Out of the whole lineup tonight, the winner of these five whiskeys, even though they don't really have much to do with each other, is going to be the Yellowstone Single Malt at an 8.8 out of 10. Yes. So, I, I, so I actually enjoy doing like these mishmash, like I random too. hodgepodge episodes. We have to try so much shit. I do too. That, and there's, we have so much more ammo for the whiskey of the year now. We do. We um, have a lot. But with that being said, I, hopefully you guys find, found something interesting within one of these five bottles that you guys either... Made made you go out and buy one, or made you go, huh? Maybe try something else in this category. Yeah. Uh, but also, at the end of every episode, we'd like to say, please. We hope you enjoyed the video, and by that, please like the video. And once you like the video, please hit subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel. And number three, please comment on the video if we either have made a mistake you want to correct us, yeah. and or if you call just, us out on our bullshit. Call us out on our shit. So, or and or if you just like the video and you want to have a positive comment, we really appreciate that too. So, everybody, uh, drink responsibly, have a great night, enjoy your week, and happy Easter. Happy Easter. Cheers. Cheers. There's not a glass, but, you know.